Harvest time was the night I got benched. That was before I was a Christian. Um, I knew all about God, but I didn't know Him personally. And uh, I think it took something like that, some devastating blow for me to uh, uh, get to the point where God got my attention. Um, and uh, you know, I, I felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders. Um, I lost my job, something that never happened to me before as an athlete. And uh, when God took away what was my God, which was my ability to play the game of football, uh, he had my full attention. And, uh, you know, that was the night that I got saved, and it was the most glorious night. It was the most famous, miserable night I ever had, because uh, I haven't been in misery like that ever since. So that's, uh, you know, that's almost coming up on 40 years. It's uh, pretty incredible. I can remember uh, numerous times when I felt like lonely and, and felt like maybe there was uh, something awry in my life, something that I needed fixing. Um, and most of that, most of those times were due to the fact that I just kind of strayed away from what I knew was truth, and that is that uh, you know Jesus loves me, um, cares for me, He's mapped out the rest of my life for me, um, and for me to do anything other than walk closely with Him and. Uh, have that special relationship, um, you know, I think those are the times that I've been the most lonely is when I strayed away, you know, and it's always brought me right back. I think we had some guys on my team when I got to the Falcons that were really weirdos. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to describe them. I mean, you know, I, I looked at them and I said, man, there's something different about those guys. You know, guys like Brady Sterling, uh, Craig Brazina, Ralph Ortega, June Jones. Um, you know, these guys were just, you know, they, they were the, you know, I looked at their life. I started analyzing who they were, what they were as athletes, and they were the best players on the team. Uh, they were guys that first to work in the morning, last to leave the facility, uh, you know, always doing their job to the very best of their ability. They had great families. Uh, they had a lot of the stuff I was looking for and uh, couldn't find uh, until I came to Christ. Uh, they had a tremendous influence on me. And there was a guy that was teaching the Bible study at that point in time who discipled me. His name is Dan DeHaan. He's gone on to be with the Lord. But uh, Dan, you know, he was one of those kind of guys that told me that you're going to have a lot of people beating on your door to come tell them about, you know, what's happened in your life. He said, but before you stand up, stand up for Jesus. You need to sit down, sit down with Jesus. So uh, we spent a lot of time, about a year and a half, of just going through the basic tenets of what it means to be saved, and what it means to be a Christian. So that grounded me. Well, June you know, was, is a very unique guy. I've never been anybody in the world like June Jones. Uh, uh, just an incredible athlete he was, uh, football, basketball, baseball. Um, it just he had an awesome influence on me um, to my job. I mean, he was the guy that got promoted when I got demoted. And, uh, you know, June, I just knew that he always had a quiet confidence about it. And, uh, you know, I told him that I, I, I'd given my life to Christ after I got benched. And he said, well, Bart, I'm going to play this position until you get your life right and give it to Christ. And, you know, a couple of weeks later, after June got himself beat up in L.A., I think he got sacked like 11 times or something. It was just awful watching, watching the game. And uh, one of the few games I was happy I wasn't playing in. <laughs> June came, came up to me after that game and he said, Bart, he said, I hope you give your life to Christ. He said, because you won't be what you can be without him. Well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your, with all your body, and all your mind. Um, and that's the number one commandment. Um, Love your neighbor as yourself. You know, I mean, it's the things that Jesus preached. Um, it's so easy to get caught up in this world, to get dragged down by all the stuff that's out there that's really, you know, for the, from a Christian standpoint, you know, there's, they're out there to trip you up, to make you go another way uh, instead of God's way. And uh, the more you can love God, the more you can draw closer to Him and, and uh, rely on Him. You know, the Christian life is simply Christ alive in a man or woman. And if you have never experienced that, uh, it's going to sound awfully foreign for, to you, but uh, Jesus said, himself said to his disciples, it's needful that I go away, because when I do go away, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, which will live in you. 
And that's the miracle of the Christian life. You know, it's not trying to be good or, you know, trying to do the right thing. It's allowing Christ to live his life through you and confront other people with the good news that there is salvation for sinful man. It's found at the foot of the cross, the, the bloody, nasty cross that Jesus gave his life for us on is uh, what is our key to salvation. He paid the debt we couldn't pay. And, uh, and all he wants to do is live inside of us, direct us and give us the life that he died to give us.